Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Ying, with your host Mr. Ying. And today we're going to talk about machine learning techniques with text. And oh, since it's coffee time, here I got my freshly brewed coffee as a warm start of the weekend morning. Ah, tastes great. So today I got a really nice episode for you guys. We're not just going to do the book review. Also going to land on the recent release of Chat GPT and talk about what that is and what we can do about it. So with that being said, let's start with the book review. So there's a new title that's just been released from Pack Publisher. It's called Machine Learning Techniques with Text. So I thought that was a great start for this month because OpenAI also released the Chat GPT, which is essentially a chatbot using GPT. So we're going to talk about all of that, but before we get started, let's just talk about the basics, which is exactly what this book is covering. So on a high level, this new book is covering pretty much all the fundamental building blocks of applying machine learning and deep learning methodologies on texts. Specifically, you can think of this book as the following four pillars. First is text processing. Second is dimensionality reduction. And then, of course, we have classification as well as evaluation. So the area that I really enjoy about this book is it can really just serve as a standard textbook in the sense that it covers a wide range of different topics at a very fundamental level. So what that basically means is any beginners, any professors, they can take the book, open it up, download the source code, and boom, there you go. That's your teaching material. And you should be able to get every new beginner that's entering the field of natural language processing up to speed at a very short amount of time. So that sounds amazing, right? Where does the title come from? Let's talk about the author and contributor of this book. So the name of the author is Nikos Tarakis. He's a professor of computer science and business analytics at the International Institute in Geneva. He's also a research associate at University of Geneva. And then on top of that, this dude has 20 years of experience, specifically in the field of natural language processing, intelligence system, document processing, software engineer, and so on and so forth. So right off the bat, I just want to say that if I'm a beginner entering the field of natural language processing, I feel like I'm in good hands, right? Because not only is this book able to tell you on a first name basis what these models mean, they're also able to cover a little bit about the industry background, which is what's important. Because think about it, natural language processing is highly experimental and pragmatic. It's going to be a very boring project if you build a natural language processing for six months, and at the end of six months, your project just stay on the shelf. So we don't want that to happen, right? And if we don't want that to happen in the industry as a researcher, then when you teach students in a classroom setting, why do you want to sell that idea? You don't, right? So it's much better off to show students how things can be applied in the industry and why it's important, which is fundamentally what this book is doing in each chapter. And one additional piece of information I like about this author is that he's a certified AWS instructor. And he got his PhD in multilingual information processing. So right off the bat, we're not just talking about NLP anymore, right? We're in the field of NLP, but the author is able to dive much deeper. So that I really appreciate, right? Because during my time at Columbia University as a grad student, I came across this project that is using machine learning to try to understand what is the difference between explainability and interpretability. So if this is the first time you're hearing, you could get confused. What is the difference, right? It turned out that from a linguistic point of view, the word explainability and interpretability actually has a subtle difference. Right? Think about it. X means outside, right? In means inside, internally. There's a difference whether the user that's using the model need to add in additional methodology to understand what the model is doing. Okay? so. If you don't need to, if a user does not need to do that, then it's implicit, right? That is interpretability. Otherwise, you need to explain it. You need to 
give a little bit of additional juice to this model, add additional methodology, and so on and so forth. That requires additional efforts. So that is explainability. So that project pretty much got me thinking, right? To use machine learning, you're not just deploying algorithms to a data set and fingers crossed, hopefully this thing magically works, right? It goes far beyond that. And a good example to understand all of that is to pick a pair of words that you really are interested in and look at these topics from a linguistic perspective and see how things change. So fortunately, when I'm reading this title, a lot of the concepts that's discussed in these chapters rings that bell, right? It talks about some sort of model. It doesn't matter how fundamental it is. It could be using a package to process the text into tokens, one hot encoding, right? It could be dimensionality using principal component analysis or linear discriminant analysis. And then on top of that, maybe you deploy a deep learning model to try to understand if this email is spam or not, right? Like a classic spam detector project. So when this book is walking readers through these topics, it really focuses on the linguistic perspective, which is really an area that I enjoy. And I particularly find that piece helpful when I'm jogging through these examples. And then on top of that, this book has provided complementary GitHub repo. They're in 10 chapters, so it makes your life very easy. You can download the GitHub repo, copy it, open up your code, run the code, and boom, there you have the results. You can insert the data, whatever you want, turn it into your own project, try to understand the topic a little bit more, and then you can take it from there, which is great. So ChatGPT, what is it? It's a chatbot that uses the model GPT. Okay, so chatbot, you get it, right? It's a robot behind a screen that answers questions. We do a little bit simple Q and A, right? Now, of course, this concept exists long ago. You go online, customer service, and chances are they're gonna be having a chatbot. You ask some basic questions, they query the question, and it gives you the data, right? And it responds the data back, right? When do I get my package? Well, here's a link, you check it out. Can I return my package? Here's a link, you can apply it, you can return it, right? So on and so forth. So that's the concept. The concept is not novel, the concept exists long ago, okay? Instead of a person behind a screen that you have to pay 20 bucks an hour, now we have a robot taking care of that initial steps for you. Now, ChatGPT is basically the exact same concept, but the back end is a transformer model, which as you can probably guess, it's much more intuitive, much more accurate, and much more, what's the word I should use? Humanized. So the key concept here is GPT, right? Chat GPT is chatbot that uses GPT. Okay, so what is GPT? GPT is short for Generative Pre-trained Transformers. Generative means that we are in the world of sequence to sequence model, right? We're not talking about classifying a pictures to cats and dogs, right? We're not talking about spam detector that you're reading a chunk of email and you say it's spam or not spam because those are not sequence to sequence model. They are classifiers. Sequence to sequence model means that I enter in a text and the machine is able to generate a chunk of text. So that's the world we're in, generative model. And then the second letter P, that means pre-trained. So when it comes to pre-train, you already guessed, right? Pre-train means what? Pre-train means this model has been trained before based on whatever text available, whatever data available at that time, right? Whatever this is released, let's say this is released late November, early December, and whatever data that they used upon the release date, that's the data that they have. And that version is two or three or whatever, that can be updated. So meaning what? Meaning they can keep on training, right? This thing upon the release, now it's only taking five days to have a million users. And these a million users, they're gonna interact with the software and you don't think they're collecting the data? Of course not. They're gonna collect the data from the user, they're gonna take a look at what other people type, and then they can use that 
as new training data. So that's kind of the idea here, right? Pre-trained means there are different versions, and guess what? It can get better and better as long as more people are using it and that data is collected. So whatever it is that you see right now, it's only going to get better from here, not worse. And then the last letter T, it means transformers. Okay, what does that mean? A transformer model is essentially just another deep learning model that is based on the concept of recurrent neural network. And recurrent neural network is a basic building block that try to understand sequential data. It's the type of data set with a timestamp. So what do I mean by timestamp, right? When I say a sentence, there's a timestamp. I can't say 10 words at the same time, right? I say one word at a time and I continue. Same with temperature. Today, 10 a.m., it's 70 degrees. And then it changes as time moves forward, right? Or stock price. Today, the closing price of Apple stock is $140, something like that. This type of data is called sequential data. And recurrent neural network acts as a Markov chain, is essentially designed to tackle this type of data and try to understand what is the information inside of this type of data. And since it's generative, the output layer of this model is another sequence. So that's what makes things interesting. And on top of that, a transformer is a highly advanced recurrent neural network model that adopts a mechanism of what you call self-attention layer. So what is that? Well, attention layer, as its name suggests, it pays attention to something, right? If you give me a text, then the idea is this layer emphasizes its weight on certain parts of the text when it's making its prediction. So the motivation to design this and to implement this type of layer in your model architecture is trying to mimic the human cognitive attention in the sense that the input data, the chunk of sentence that you feed in to the model, the model automatically enhance certain information of that input data and diminishes some other information of that same input data. And guess what? The way that it diminishes or enhances information can be learned from the training data. And that's why it's accurate. So with that being said, that's a long explanation of what ChatGPT is about on a high level. And on top of that, I just want to say ChatGPT is one of the most important innovation. And I think that as this thing is taking off, there's going to be more and more advanced version and to help users to really interact with the World Wide Web in a much more efficient manner. So for average Joe, just like myself, it's much better for me to learn this and to understand it than if I just let it go and drop it. Same with this title I'm reviewing for today's video. It's giving you a whole arsenal of building blocks to understand natural language processing. And with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.